Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. It is the first full day post Pete Carroll here in Seattle, and I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about where this team is headed. I'm feeling pretty good about the direction they have chosen to take, and I'm excited to see what happens next. So there's a lot to talk about over the next couple weeks, but there's one thing that I want to go ahead and lead with now that we're in the first full day post Pete Carroll, and that is the fact that while Pete Carroll is going, John Schneider is sticking around. So that's kind of interesting because a lot of people assumed that Carroll and Schneider were connected at the hip and that when one goes, the other might go, and some people lumped John Schneider into the Pete Carroll bucket and thought both guys were basically extensions of the other. And because of that, I think there's still some concern that not enough has changed. But I want to talk about this angle for a little bit here because it's very interesting. So first we have this tweet from Mike Dugar on X. When Pete Carroll was asked about the excitement of seeing John Schneider take over, Pete said, it's why this happened because I want him to have this chance says John deserves this moment to take over. That was the biggest factor. Now, I don't believe for one second that Pete Carroll willingly stepped aside and stepped down so that John Schneider could take over. In fact, that implication would directly contradict some of the other things that Pete said in that press conference about how he wanted to remain the head coach and ultimately wasn't able to. Um, I, I want to be very clear that I do believe he got fired maybe not fired in the sense of get out of the building because he's going to be here as an advisor, but I do believe that he wanted to remain the head coach and the team said no because they were unhappy with the direction of the franchise. So I do doubt Pete Carroll on that front, but the general sentiment that he expresses here is correct. Pete Carroll leaving the head coaching position and John Schneider staying on as general manager represents a true chance maybe for the fir for the first time ever for John Schneider to really run this team his way and when you do the math on potential sale of ownership of the team which could come in like 15 months potentially but probably take closer to two years this could be a one or two year audition for John Schneider to prove that he can do this on his own to either impress the next ownership group or get work as a general manager elsewhere when the new owners come in. So that makes the next couple of years very interesting for John Schneider. And it also means this isn't a complete teardown because John Schneider staying means that part of the architect of this current roster is still here. There are teams out there, we've seen a couple this season, that will clean house. They'll get rid of the GM and the coach and say, okay, we're taking it all the way down as much as humanly possible, and we're just going to accept being bad for a year or two so that we can um, we, we can build back up from the very bottom level. That's probably not what's going to happen here if Schneider sticks around. Now, we don't know for sure. We don't know exactly how the sausage was made in the front office when Carol and Schneider were here. But I've always made assumptions, educated guesses, and theories about this, um, the way these two guys work together, Schneider and Carroll. And it seemed to me that Pete Carroll was the guy in complete control for basically the entire time. He was in control of personnel. He was in control of drafting. He was in control of scouting. He was in control of coaching. He was in control of everything from the moment he got here. And John Schneider was basically just there to advise and handle paperwork and inject his occasional two cents into the conversation. Um, that's not to say that Schneider didn't occasionally get his way. Famously, John Schneider was the guy who fell in love with Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll didn't, wasn't really that into him and Schneider had to convince Carroll to draft Russell Wilson, which is kind of ironic when you consider how those relationships ended, but Schneider got his way on that one. It's also believed that Schneider got his way on the occasional draft pick, and I'm sure there was some give and take there, but I feel like running the team was 90% Carroll until 2021. After the 2021 season, 
it seemed to me that Pete Carroll lost his final say on personnel and Schneider got a lot more power and was able to do things like run the draft. It's just a theory, but our philosophies drafting changed radically and completely after 2021. The 2022 and the 2023 draft, not just in success, but also in philosophy, had nothing in common with the way in which the previous several drafts were run. So I felt like somebody different must have been in control, and the only guy who it made sense that it could be would be Schneider. So I suspect at that point Schneider got more power, but Pete was obviously still the head coach, and he still had his own power. And I feel like Pete and John disagreed a lot, which is always kind of awkward when one guy's building the roster and the other guy's coaching it. But they kind of sort of were able to make it work. So now John Schneider is in complete control. All reports indicate that the head coaching search is going to be handled by John Schneider and Jody Allen together, not Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll has no say in the next head coach. So it's going to be John and Jody handpicking their guy. And then the roster decisions are going to be handled by John Schneider. So he becomes the full-on GM for at least a year, maybe two. And we see what he does in that time. And based on that, we either keep him or he gets another chance somewhere else. Or it's the end of the road for him. And we find out that, oh, he was, I guess, just a product of Pete Carroll. I guess Pete Carroll really was the mastermind behind all this. Or maybe we'll just never really know. Maybe he'll just do okay, and it's going to be impossible to determine anything. So <clears throat> I'm interested to see what he can do now that he has complete say. Um, I don't think I need to tell you guys about the history of John Schneider as a general manager or a front office worker in general in this league. Um, been working since the 90s, mostly for the Packers, and then he came to the Seahawks. Uh, he was a scout in Green Bay. He went to Kansas City and was director of pro personnel for a few years. Had some moderately successful years in Green Bay and Kansas City. Just, you know, won a Super Bowl as a scout. Kind of nice. Uh, was actually in Seattle for one year as director of player personnel, 2000, with Holmgren. Went to Washington for one year, vice president of player personnel. And then he went back to Green Bay and for about five years there was the top personnel aide to general manager. And it wasn't until that point that he actually started getting some real power. So in Green Bay from 2008 to 2009, he was the director of football operations. So Green Bay was rebuilding in the post-Brett um, Favre era. That was the first two years of Aaron Rodgers as the full-time starter in Green Bay. And it was a slow process, but that team that was built up over 2008-2009 was able to go win the Super Bowl in 2010 so he did something right, but 2010 was the first year he actually became a general manager and executive vice president where he's been since. Now again, that's the title. That doesn't necessarily mean he held the power of those positions, and I think it's very safe to say that he didn't. So what has he really done? We don't get to know that. We will never truly get to know who did what in Seattle during the Schneider Carroll era. I have my theories. I have my suspicions. I think they're based off of educated guesses and facts. But I'm just sitting here guessing based off the information that we do get and common sense, basically. That's, that's all we got sometimes as fans. But this is a great opportunity for John Schneider. He gets to pick his coach and... The, the, the issue here, the one issue that I will say, keeping John Schneider, because there's a lot of things about keeping John Schneider that I'm good with. I think that if he has been in control of the draft the last two seasons, he's done a good job. I think the last two drafts for the Seahawks have been really good, light years better than the drafts we were having previously when it seemed like Carroll had more control. So that was uh, definitely a vote of confidence in his favor if that is indeed what happened. And again, I'm not suggesting that we know that for sure. We don't, but I feel like that's what happened, personally. And um, if if that is indeed the case, then um, I, what, what I would say is that there's an opportunity here for him to keep this team together somewhat, right? Because he built the team partially. 
Um, he probably had a lot to do with the Charles Cross, A. Lucas, Boye Mafe, Devin Witherspoon, um, JSN, K9, Charbonnet picks. He's going to want to keep those guys. And I'm okay with that. Also, if he truly is working with like a one-year or two-year audition, he's not going to want to tear it down because then you spend the whole time being terrible because you ripped it down. So he's probably thinking like, okay, how do we get back to the winner circle ASAP? How do we build a winner around mostly what we have rather than me trying to sell off everything and just starting over from scratch? I'm going to get fired before I get a chance to finish that rebuild, so let's not do the rebuild. And I'm cool with all that. However, the one issue that I see here is that the best coaching candidates are not necessarily going to want to come here because they're not going to have control of the GM position and they're not going to be able to bring in their own GM. If Jim Harbaugh comes to the NFL this year, which a lot of people think that he will, if Jim Harbaugh wants to come coach the Seahawks, he's probably going to say, I want the GM role. I want to be a GM and coach. And that won't fly if Schneider's the one calling the shots. So a guy like Jim Harbaugh might be off the table. Um, if there are other coaching candidates out there, like Bill Belichick, who wants to be a coach and GM, off the table. If we're keeping Schneider, that can't happen. However, I think a lot of the better coaching candidates, guys like Mike McDonald, guys like Ben Johnson, those guys are probably willing to just be head coaches for a little while and actually prove themselves before they ask for GM power. So I still think there are good candidates out there, but the cream of the crop are going to want power that we cannot give them because we're keeping Schneider. But what do you guys think about the John Schneider stuff? What do you guys think about keeping him? What do you think about the job he's done? Let me know what you think. See you guys later. Go Hawks.